The tension on the force right now is significant. I know they've been gone for two, sometimes three weeks at a time, and then they come back. There's just, there's no time. We gotta start back up again. I need you to get back. There are almost 2,000 pilots short. There's no shortage in the work that has to be done. It just has to be done with fewer people. We're making the mission happen, but we're having to do it very often on the backs of our airmen. How do you take an organization that is brilliant, they are world class, they are the best in the history of mankind, and they start seeing the signs that they need to do something different. So in our business of national security, where our job is to fly, fight, and win, our job is to be prepared for the unexpected, our job is to win no matter what, we better be masters at this game of innovation. It's a complicated problem. It's not just, there's no silver bullet or one thing. It's a, it's a, the relationship of things. Reversing the pilot shortage requires coordination across the Air Force to produce more pilots without creating bottlenecks in the training pipeline. Right now, the Air Force must retain pilots to grow its future force, but the only way to recover from the pilot shortage is to produce more pilots. And so the strategy is production but stable production at the numbers that we need over time. That is really the ultimate fix to the pilot crisis. The most critical shortage right now is within the fighter pilot community. To produce a way out, the Air Force has to tackle challenges throughout the three stages of the pilot production pipeline. After commissioning, the first stage of an Air Force pilot's journey is undergraduate pilot training. So UPT is essentially a program where we take students and develop them into aviators. We teach them the foundations of, of flying. The, the class sizes for the students have increased without a corresponding increase in uh, instructor manning. Time is a commodity. In pilot training, it's a big time commodity. Roll wings level momentarily. To maximize the learning for that student, to have it be focused in order to be able to now facilitate getting that student to their peak or getting beyond any sort of barrier that they might be having. The definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over and expecting a different result, right? So when it takes us uh, a year to produce an aviator, um, that timeline has to be shrunk based on our, um, our current demands. The Air Force is working on game-changing ways to train aviators, which has brought 20 airmen to Austin, Texas for an experimental program called Pilot Training Next. It aims to train skills learned at UPT in half the amount of time using virtual and augmented reality. So we're not taking UPT and making incremental changes. We are taking a leap in one direction with the expectation that that leap is going to provide change inside of the UPT construct. There are a couple of artificial intelligences that we intend to leverage. One of them is uh, algorithmic in nature, which means that it's a model that's able to instruct students in the absence of a, of a live instructor pilot. This isn't to replace the instructor pilot, but it's to give access to instructor techniques uh, much more on demand for the student. We know that pilot training can be better. Um, the reality of this is that we don't think we have this solved right now. This is not intended to be the program which replaces pilot training. When somebody sits down for the first time in these sims and they, they make a comment like, this might not be where it needs to be now, but I can totally see how we can get across that goal line in a month, two months, three months, whatever it might be. So look around. Wow. And if it's not us, then it'll be somebody else. After graduating UPT, pilots head to their formal training unit. That could mean Holloman Air Force Base, New Mexico for a newly selected F-16 pilot. In a formal training unit, we are teaching F-16 pilots ultimately to be ready for combat. And so each of the mission sets that the F-16 does is taught here in the FTU. This is where it all begins, teaching a student first how to take off and land, but more importantly, how to employ the ordnance. And so this is where we teach them the fight portion of that, right? So they can fly an airplane, but now we need to teach them how to give them the capabilities and the tools to go out and employ when the nation calls upon them to do so. At this stage, solving problems through innovation doesn't mean technology changes. Here at FTU, it's processes that needed to change. In the past, when an instructor pilot needed to make changes to the syllabus to meet the needs of a student, they had to route those changes up through their squadron commander, group commander, and sometimes the vice wing commander for approval. Now that authority has been placed in the hands of a squadron commander. 
And that almost in and of itself creates more efficiency because there's much less asking of superiors, can I do this, can I do that? For instance, I can make a syllabus waiver if I think that a student has done well and needs to do one event uh, potentially out of order or to proficiency advance past an event because they've been doing really well. One of the things that keeps me up at night is making sure that in our discussion of trying to produce more students faster, that we don't lose sight of the fact that we still need to produce the same quality of student and make sure that they are very close to being combat mission ready. We understand that what we do today could affect uh, the decisions they make um, and the actions they take uh, within a year from now and that could uh, affect the air power and endowments projection that we have uh, across the globe. One of those bases around the globe is Shaw Air Force Base, South Carolina. Well, I think Holloman is kind of a stepping stone to get you here. A lot of the things designed at Holloman are based on the needs of those bases like Shaw. You know, you're outside of the sensor. And, and what they need to get guys through MQT faster and get them ready to go fight. Mission qualification training is the training that we do when we get a new pilot here and we want to make him combat mission ready so that we can take him on any deployment, he can go fight in any war, do whatever we need him to. I don't have a ton of experienced pilots, which means I don't have a ton of instructor pilots. We're trying to solve a retention problem. Because we know that we cannot produce the pilots fast enough to backfill all of those who have been leaving. And so that loss is really felt at the squadron level because it just doesn't get replaced uh, for quite a bit of time, maybe a year, maybe two years, that that position will just go vacant. The Air Force is working on about 65 planned incentives to improve work-life balance and quality of service for pilots. We're just improving force development, talent management. We're taking care of, of families better. We're, doing, we're treating uh, pilots like professional athletes and working on neck and back care. And we're just doing a lot of things um, that needed to be done to take care of our airmen. And in every crisis, there's an opportunity. So we see an opportunity to really just improve how we take care of our, our pilots and airmen writ large. We might have to go out on a limb and, and try some things that maybe we, maybe we even think might fail. Even we think they might fail, but let's just try something new in order to, uh, to potentially get a win in the long run. What you do is you find the people that have a natural propensity to be good at innovating. They have these habits of mind. They have this hunger to do things better. Always, always, always thinking about this one question. And if there's one question you ought to leave here remembering, it's this question. And the question is, how can I do this better? We better be masters at this game of innovation.